In our next video, we are going to make some changes to our two car garage with the loft area above. And the first thing we're going to do is install a larger header instead of a 4x12. We're going to use a 4x16. And we are going to get rid of the hinge point that ran across here and use full length 2x4s to connect from the top of the header to the wall framing plates. And even though we don't need fire blocks here because of the header, I went ahead and installed them anyway along with some mid-span blocks. And keep in mind that the methods of construction in this video series, including this video, might require structural engineering in your area. So keep that in mind when you're watching this video and most of the videos that I make. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and move the stairway a little bit further this way and then balloon frame this area and this area here, except I'm going to switch this wall here to 2x6 so that I can get a little more structural strength out of these long framing studs. And I believe the longest length we're looking at is about 19 feet. And that might be a little bit too long for even a 2x6. You might want to switch those to 2x8s or put a couple of 4x6s in here every 4 feet or even every other stud. And something you don't see all the time in my videos will be the winder stairway. And that's because I do have another channel for stair building. And the name of that channel is actually called Stair Building on YouTube. Probably easy to find. And don't forget to visit our website to check out some of our books. We do have a book on building winder stairs for those of you interested in a little more information about the construction of this type of stairway. Let's go ahead and remove the roof so we can get a better look at the wall framing here. And here we have our mid-span blocks kind of stepping up as we get a little taller so that we can keep them kind of located in the middle of the studs. And another thing you might want to do is is line a block up here with this block and then put a strap here to connect these two or even line a whole row of blocks up and then run a strap across wrap it around the whole building if you need to okay I'm just kidding about that but you can line blocks up to connect any framing spots that you might consider to be a little weaker another view of the garage header along with our blocks there and these blocks can also be used to nail the drywall to the bottom of the drywall and any of your wood floor trim. So not a bad idea to install those. Another view of the rake wall there. Blocking another angle of it inside. And I'm going to try and provide as many angles of this as I can so that you can stop it whenever you want to to get a better look at something. And hopefully I will be able to provide you with all the views necessary and a view of the floor sheathing. And don't forget that this might need to be a little larger. And I think I mentioned that in a previous video. A view of the floor framing where we are going to have a doubler run all the way across. This doubler is going to sit on framing studs. And one of the reasons why I broke this here and then had the rim connect to the wall framing and then butt up against the doubler was because I had a break here anyway and you can go back and watch the previous videos to find that break. So if I have a break here anyway why not make it a little stronger by setting this doubler on top of a wall framing stud instead of having it sit in a hanger. And of course we will need a post here something to support the corner of the floor along with our hangers and then we're going to need a double hanger for the connection between this doubler and this one and then this corner will sit on top of a 4x6 now a lot of engineers use a 4x4 there when a 4x6 will allow you to set everything on top with a minimum of two inches instead of using an inverted hanger or something here with a 4x4 post and of course I took a strap and wrapped it around to give us a nice connection between these joists here along with a couple of straps to connect the post to the joist. And again you can use other hardware to accomplish similar results. In a view of how our double joist is sitting on top of the double studs. Close up of the straps along with a view of the double hanger. Next up, let's take a look at the stair head out and how the doubler here is going to be connecting to this doubler again with a double hanger. And then a couple of single joist hanger there. 
along with a view from the bottom and of course a view from the other side and in this example here I removed the spacer block for the drywall to provide you with an idea of what that would look like and another view of the floor framing along with another view of this connection here along with our fire blocks and of course the installation of the sheathing another view from this angle where we can see the joist sitting on top of the 2x6 wall there fire blocking around the stairway and in some cases the fire blocking gets a little creative next up let's go ahead and take a tour of the stairway and I'm not going to be providing you with all the information you need to build a stairway like this but we'll be providing you with plenty of shots and don't forget that if you are going to use a post that's going to create a concentrated load on the foundation that you will need a larger concrete footing underneath this area here and the winder stairway was my choice because I needed a little more room in the garage just in case there was a minimum of 18 feet and a lot of the building codes that I've worked with out here in Southern California require a single resident home to be able to park at least one car in the garage and on the other side you're probably not going to have a problem because you could have a longer vehicle with the front probably going almost to the edge of the wall here and again this would be information you would need to find at your local building department next up let's go ahead and whip around the stairway here so you can see here where the stringer is sitting on top of the wall I like that kind of construction and all of the winder framing will be sitting on top of support bracing or nailed into the side of the wall framing so I'm just going to kind of go around here give you some views of how you can use different types of 2x4 with or without notches and of course how the fire blocking is going to work along with the inside corner here and sometimes you might need to extend the length of the bottom plates because smaller pieces might crack when you're attaching them to the concrete with the pins or whatever types of fasteners you're going to use and I would like to say that this is a stairway that anyone can build however it is going to be easier if you have my book especially if you don't know very much about building winder stairs and this is another type of stairway that can be confusing or understand the difference why you shouldn't use some of the building codes that might be outdated in your area and one of those building codes will have something to do with the narrowest point on the step and the walk line that would create a safe stairway and let's go ahead and wrap this video up with a explanation of why I moved the stairs this way instead of adding more steps at the top and again that's going to have something to do with the headroom if six foot eight inches is our minimum headroom distance and it needs to fit within this three foot area then you're going to need to make sure that the first step or the last step at the top is located in the right spot to provide you with the headroom clearance desired by your local building department and another thing I want to point out is that some building codes allow a section of the ceiling to be a little smaller than six foot eight inches especially in a situation like this where most people are going to walk up the stairway and kind of hug the center here this will be the pivot point this corner here will be the pivot point they're going to walk up the stairway and then kind of turn around and then go into the room and sometimes the building department will allow this area to be a little bit smaller maybe about a one foot section coming in here at the top and again I'm just kind of throwing that out there as something to think about if you're dealing with a tight space something to where you just need a little more room to make everything work out so that's it for the video and if you have any questions about the design or comments about the design feel free to leave those in the comment area